Hi, I'm Olivia Patchell. I'm the Family and Consumer Science Extension Agent for Currituck and Canton Counties. And um, today we're going to do a jambalaya for you guys in our live food demo. So um, just a reminder, if you have any questions as we go through our demo, you can chat with us in the box. You can also, in the chat box, if you're on YouTube or if you're on Facebook, uh, leave us a comment below. We'll try to get those questions answered. Um, if you have any questions after the broadcast, you're more than welcome to uh, email myself, uh, Olivia Patton. My information can be found on the Currituck Extension or Camden Extension website. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with the recipe. Sheila is actually um, helping us today. Sheila Gregory is the program assistant in Currituck County uh, for the Family and Consumer Science Department, and she is preparing. Uh, the first part of our recipe, uh, uh, recipe, the Creole jambalaya, can be found uh, linked in the description of this stream. And we will also add it to the comments uh, later so you guys have that available to you. So we're um, actually starting with a large pot over medium. And um, we added oil and we've already got sauteing our... Um, onions and bell peppers. So we're using green bell peppers, but you can use the bell peppers that are available to you. And we're going to go ahead and add some salt and pepper. And these are going to cook until they're soft. And that could take about five minutes. And we're going to then add in our chicken and oregano. And we're going to cook our chicken. So for time purposes, we went ahead and cooked the chicken a little bit ahead so that um, it would be a little bit done and ready for you guys. So it wouldn't take quite the 40 minutes that it says it does. Um, so we're speeding things up a little bit. So uh, just a little food safety stuff here. Um, as far as cross-contamination goes, you want to make sure that you um, go ahead and cut all of your vegetables first. And then we're going to cut our meat second. And that way we do not um, contaminate our vegetables with any of that raw meat because this recipe calls for your um, sausage to be cut. Of course, sausage wouldn't be a contaminant issue, but then also your chicken. So you want to make sure that you cut that chicken last and you'll cut those into one inch cubes. Um, it, you can also utilize two separate cutting boards, some for produce and then some for meats. Uh, if that's something that your home would allow to have more than one cutting board, or you can always clean and sanitize in between. But if you wait and cut your chicken last, then you won't have to worry as much about that cross-contamination. And then we want to make sure that we wash our hands thoroughly after cutting that raw chicken uh, so that we do not spread any um, contaminants around our kitchen. A lot of people uh, are still washing chicken. So I know chicken breasts do look um, film on them sometimes come from the store. You can always pat them with a, a paper towel or wipe them with a paper towel if you, you feel like you need to do that. Um, but we do not recommend washing your chicken in the sink or um, running it under the water. That's really just going to splash and um, move contaminants around your kitchen. So we want to make sure that we're um, uting, utilizing best practices um, as far as uh, the safety of cross contamination. So uh, the chicken is going to cook until it's golden. Again, we don't have a lot in here, so we're just trying to brown that chicken up a little bit. And again, this will take an additional five minutes. But like I said, we have already cooked our chicken a little bit ahead of time. So we're just browning it here. And then we're going to add our sausage, our garlic, and our tomato paste. And let that cook until fragrant. And so that takes about one minute. So that's the first step in our recipe. So I want to talk a little bit about... Um, some substitutions here. So um, you could um, leave out the uh, sausage if that's not something that your family might enjoy. You could leave out the chicken if you're trying for a different um, type of recipe. And we'll talk a little bit about the origins of jambalaya here in just a little bit, but um, you can just utilize what you have available to you. So we're using um, the uh, tomato paste from the store in the can. You'll want to make sure that you get the, the smaller uh, can because for storage purposes at the, um, after you've utilized um, what you need for this recipe, I recommend that you take 
out of the can and then put it into a, a container. You can freeze the tomato paste and utilize it later. Uh, I like to keep tomato paste on hand because it's in a lot of recipes, but you usually only utilize a little bit for each, maybe two to three tablespoons. So um, just for um, not wasting that product, even though it's not expensive, uh, I recommend taking it out of that can and putting it something that, that will uh, last in the refrigerator for about a week, or you can freeze it for several months in an airtight container. Um, we are utilizing andouille sausage here, and we've got pre-minced garlic for convenience. Of course, you can all, always use garlic that fresh in the cloves and mince it yourself. You can even utilize frozen produce here for another vegetable that some people even add okra to this recipe. Uh, jambalaya is basically uh, originated in New Orleans as um, a dish for whatever you had on hand. And uh, so we're utilizing the things that are kind of central to our area, but maybe you have something that would work better for you or your family or y'all's tastes. Uh, maybe you have something in the garden. This would be a great way to utilize it in this one pot meal. Once everything has um, kind of cooked for that part of the recipe, we're gonna add chicken broth and the crushed tomatoes. We add the rice and we're utilizing Old Bay seasoning um, just uh, for our convenience, one of my favorites. And it's a little bit of the traditional um, Creole jambalaya uh, seasoning. We're gonna reduce the heat and let the lid, uh, cover it with the lid. Actually, we don't have to cover ours with the lid because we've already cooked the rice. Um, but if you haven't pre-cooked your rice, you'll want to cover the um, dish with a lid and then um, let the rice cook. And this should take about 20 minutes and it will begin to absorb some of that liquid in the um, chicken broth and the crushed tomatoes. So to make your uh, jambalaya more or less liquidy, you add a little bit more tomato or a little bit more uh, broth, a little bit more crushed tomato or a little bit more chicken broth. And that is completely up to you. We have um, also added, have pre-cooked shrimp to add to the top. And then the longer you let this cook, of course, the longer it's going to, um, the, the seasonings are going to meld and the dish is gonna uh, be more complete. We're going to serve this with some green onions. And as Sheila's going through the process, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the cool stuff about um, one pot meals and the, the Cajun or the Creole jambalaya. So the Creole jambalaya is the red jambalaya. So there's a couple of different um, ways to make jambalaya. If you're not someone who likes the tomato based, then you could utilize a, the, uh, a different base for this one rather than using the tomatoes um, you could utilize just the chicken broth which does make a delicious um, one pot jambalaya meal as well in new orleans this particular recipe came out of necessity kind of whatever was on hand and then uh, it's kind of a party meal so when people come together uh, this was a great dish that everyone could enjoy it has three different types of meat, so you don't have to utilize all three different types of meat. Um, we're utilizing the shrimp, the andouille sausage, and the um, chicken breast. Of course, uh, some uh, Cajun recipes have crawfish or um, other types of shellfish maybe that you would find in, um, these, in the New Orleans area. And if you have some of those available to you, maybe you would like to utilize those as well. You can take out any of this or add to any of this. One of the um, things that makes this a little bit more versatile is the fact that you could use frozen necessary. And I love that as a, um, a way to change up the recipe. This one pot meal is great. Because of course, we used a lot of um, uh, sauce dishes because we like to have our stuff measured out for you guys. But uh, if you're not utilizing that, really the only cleanup is that one pot. So you start out sauteing and then you just keep adding. 
You do not have to pre-cook any of these ingredients. The recipe as um, it is listed on our, um, underneath the description, in the description, shows you how to just cook all of this in that one pot. So you're saving on the things that you need in the kitchen as well as your cleanup. So it's a definite time saver. One of the things you can do is go ahead and get this started. Let the last 20 minutes of the cooking time um, allow you to make maybe a cornbread to, to like, or um, go ahead and set the table. And that way everything's done. Make sure that you clean up as you that one pot is even um, easier to clean up after your meal. This is also a great um, dish to go ahead and cook all the way through and then freeze. Once you freeze it, then you can um, reheat it, thaw it and reheat it. Um, as far as thawing goes, I recommend thawing things in the refrigerator for um, 12 to 24 hours, depending on the size. And make sure when you put it in your freezer that you put it in containers that would serve your family size. So if the, the dish looks too big for you, make sure you cut that back. And you want to make sure that it cools completely before you, um, or cools to almost room temperature before you put it in the freezer so that you don't heat up your freezer. So let's check in on, see how she's doing with um, the recipe, she's going to go ahead, add in our shrimp and our seasoning. Our last little bit here, and of course ours is a little bit more watery than yours will be because yours is going to cook for 20 minutes, whereas we're kind of rushing it along so that you guys aren't here with us for that long. Um, another way you can serve this is to cook the rice separately, especially if you're freezing it. The Cooking the rice separately and then adding the, the um, meat part over top of that will um, allow you to pull out the juices if that's something that it, that's not um, appeasing to you. So um, for a shrimp, it only takes three to five minutes. You want to cook the shrimp until pink, um, and then you're ready to serve. A few more tips about uh, one pot meals is uh, this can also be done in a crock pot or a, um, a electric pressure cooker to speed up the time if you need it uh, and or a multi cooker where, ha where it has both of those settings. The, um, the information on how to cook that I can get to you guys. I do not know that the times right off the top of my head, but that's a great way to substitute a one pot for that might be a more convenience meal. This is a great way to heat, a great way to reheat it would be in a, um, a crock pot or an instant pot. Um, a few other tips with this meal is that you should include your whole family in picking out the produce that goes in it because this can be whatever you need it to be. So you have this base and this tomato base of dishes um, through Cajun, Spain, and Mediterranean region. And so that way you have a nice base to start with. You can add in your seasonings, your vegetables, and, and your meats and really make it your, your thing. So uh, jumble from uh, a West, it started out in West Africa as a um, rice dish. And so that's why it's kind of changed based on the regions from where it comes from. So um, I encourage you to, and your family to try something new, mix up your recipes, and um, try the dish for dinner sometime this week. And I appreciate you guys for joining us. And I do apologize for the delay in our start time. And I hope to see you guys at 10 o'clock on the first Tuesday of the month next month.